welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, here today with Bridget Baker of TravelLightLife.com. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Bridget. Yeah, thank you for having me. Excited. So one of the things that you're known for is minimalism. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, so um, minimalism is a different things to different people. Um, there's not one definition. I've tried to write about this many times and you can get very dogmatic about it or you can come up with whatever your own version is. Um, you know, my version is really looking at what's important in your life, stripping away everything that's not, and then looking at how can I create more of what's important and less of what's not. So yeah, oftentimes it, we think in, in our culture that we have to have more things, do more things, to be of more value in the world. And those things actually limit the way that we're feeling. We actually begin to feel less valuable. It's a, it's a vicious cycle. It is. And you have taken this probably to the extreme of, of most in you own no home. You own, you are just in an RV. You don't have a storage unit. Right. So tell me about that transition from like apartment living to like the RV life. What's that like? Yeah. Uh, it, well, so I, I mean, I worked in real estate sort of, I lived in Los Angeles with my husband for, we, we lived there for 20 years or so, both of us together. And uh, so I was renting out apartments and in the real estate game and, and uh, managing a couple apartment buildings and, and real estate just went up like crazy. And I thought, do I want to rent an apartment after moving away from managing apartments? Cause I had free rent, which was a great way to save money for us for this adventure. But it was like, once we got to that point where we had enough money saved, it's like, I don't want to put this into rent in Los Angeles. Um, what kind of value is this providing for my life? And so we really kind of looked at everything we had and realized that most of what we had amassed in our apartment was mainly designed just to fill the space. It's like, Oh, let's get a chair to put in this corner or, what rug can fill up that floor, but it wasn't anything we needed to quote unquote take with us, you know, um, even in the sense of things being heirlooms or, or things being more valuable. I have a couple of things I put at my mom's house, so it's not the, the totally no storage, but really it was, what do you really need? Um, it pared down and I had already pared, pared down my life a lot as far as paper. My business is completely paperless, which is a process to uh, people thinking they need to save file cabinets full of paperwork and things like that. Those are the hard things to pare down. So I, so we were already very simplified in that sense before we went into the trailer. It wasn't like we went from a six bedroom house to nothing, you know, um, we, it, everything we had was sort of like, okay, this, this is a furniture piece of furniture. That's pretty that we don't really need. Right. So that, yeah. that's not that easy. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> That one's, that one's not mine. This is why we don't do things live. <laughs> <laughs> and there's my dog. Yeah. Uh, Tony got bribed in everything. <laughs> right? I know. Come here, little. Come here. He's not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, usually if I'm live, so I'm walk around, yeah. <laughs> so, so let's talk a little bit more about um, paring things down to what's essential. Um, right. And... You, you talked about like what's getting in the way of what's really important to me. So that's, that's a lot more than stuff, right? Like this yes. is a deeper philosophy for you. Yeah. I think, yeah. Minimalism can become a lot about the stuff, like having a hundred things or having 33, you know, those are great games to get yourself to see what your life looks like with less physical stuff, but underneath the physical stuff, there's a lot going on. There's, you know, a, depending on how old you are, how much emotionally you've, you know, your limited beliefs mainly is what it is. You know, your, your beliefs of what you think your life could look like. And oftentimes people's attachment to their stuff is what actually gets in the way. You know, how many times do you hear uh, people say, Oh, I'd love to travel the world, take a vacation, whatever. But you know, who's going to watch my dog or my house? I'm worried about my house or whatever they get. They're so attached to their physical stuff that they can't even imagine their way around it. And so, you know, or their overhead is so high. We have a friend actually who has very high overhead and is almost a slave to his stuff in that way. You know, he has to spend a lot of money to protect it and to secure it and to guard it and to house it and all that, that there's not enough money left to have fun, you know? 
So I think that's, it's just, but it's, you know, if, but there's other value too. If your home is so important to you and you have people all over that the time and you know, you have family come and stay, then great. There's nothing wrong with having that much space if you're using it and, and it's a value to you. So the reason that we downsized into a trailer was because something that was valuable to us was taking an adventure. We wanted to travel the country. We wanted to explore other places see how we were when we were out of Los Angeles, you know, see, see who am I? <laughs> is it, am I taking myself with me everywhere I go or is it the city? Um, and just letting, letting our adventure be able to shape us a little bit. So that, that's because that was what was important. We paired down into a trailer. Well, and you, I, I've heard you say that like, it's not just once you get rid of all of the physical clutter, then you're just left with you. And that can be a real great thing and a real terrible thing, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your, your stuff is not in the way, you know? It's not like, oh, I'll just get one pair, more pair of shoes and I'll feel better. It's like, I don't have room for another pair of shoes, so I can't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't have some of those crutches that stuff can create to fill a void. You have to, to find other ways to to make peace with some of the challenges with yourself too. Um, especially as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, um, the isolation piece is, is oftentimes a hard thing for people anyway. So living in a trailer, it's definitely, it's hard, harder to build community, harder to stay connected, things like that. But so I've had to develop ways to connect with people online and on zoom and through technology. That's amazing. That's great. So talk to us a little bit about the practicalities of the life that you've chosen, just in terms of like the, the money stuff. So, you know, everybody thinks, that, you know, well, it's a really inexpensive way to live, which it is. Um, but one uh -huh. of the things that I had never considered is the variation in cost um, oh, from yeah. month to month. So tell me a little bit about what the practicalities of that. Yeah, well, I think, you know, number one with the practicality was, the kind of trailer we have, uh, we wrote about this on our blog a little bit, but um, my husband's a carpenter. He could, you know, he's remodeled an Airstream before uh, for someone else, but the practicality of remodeling an Airstream is it's very expensive. You have to gut the whole thing. You know, you see these things on Pinterest and you go, oh, wow, I'm going to remodel an Airstream and you have this fantasy about it and that's great, but it costs a lot of money to do that sometimes. And we decided for us, the smarter option was actually to buy a brand new trailer fully warrantied, things are covered for seven years. You know, we made a choice sacrificing the vintage trailer look and all of that for more of a practicality around, oh, wow, if something breaks, which it probably will, um, that we're protected. So that was a good peace of mind for us to start with. And then we started out in California, which is one of the most expensive places to travel. Um, as we have fellow travelers that we've talked to along the way, they're like, they try to go into California and they don't even anticipate the cost because it changes seasonally also. So there's different places have their high season and their low season. What we found a lot of the times as well, um, we're not, we're, there's different, so many different ways to do RV travel. We're not boon, what's called boondocking, which is, um, you know, you go and stay in a park and you can stay somewhere for free and, and things like that. We haven't, we haven't done that yet because we're not as off grid. We don't have solar on our trailer and it's a little harder to do that. But we found that if we go, for example, if we stay in an RV park for a month, you get a great discount. So versus staying, you know, one day at a time here and there. So we've definitely had to kind of figure out how to bundle the adventure part with the stability part because yeah first we started out we're going oh a day here two days there and it just the, those those daily costs really start to add up versus getting a monthly a monthly rv spot really getting to know a town you know that's also the helpful piece of it and then we can kind of take day or two adventures here and there in between but but yeah you just have to know it's it's hard to anticipate the cost of of this because i've had other people like i said they've saved up a bunch of money not worked, they've not been, you know, working online like I am, um, not worked and gone on, on their travels and realized, oh my gosh, we're running out of money so quickly because the gas too, not just the gas of driving your car, you're towing a trailer, which is, takes a lot more gas up in your car. So it's like what I've, yeah, what I've learned is that it's going to be unpredictable. And I think you just have to be aware of, okay, let's, it's okay if we stay a little bit for more stability versus we have to go everywhere really quickly. You know, that's, that's another piece of it. And if that's how you want to travel, if you want to travel two days at a time everywhere, great. Just know that your budget's going to need to reflect that. So, yeah. So there's, there's difference from state to state in terms of, and probably city to city in terms of like what it costs to put your RV somewhere and have it hooked yeah. to water and electric. There's 
yeah. a huge variation in utility costs, right? Because oh, yeah. like you're in Austin right now and it's going to get hot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because, it, you know, and again, it's sort of, it's like being in a car, right? <laughs> really. An RV is sort of like being in a car. A travel trailer is sort of like being in a car. So, you know, how hot your car gets inside mm. when the windows are closed because the heat is just beating on it on the windows. So that's just what's happening. Um, even though the trailer's insulated. It's so, all, so these things were, you know, it, it's not just the, where do you want to go? It's, it's, yeah, it is the practicality. Um, we've stayed someplace, we stayed in the desert longer than we had wanted to because it was wet everywhere else. And so that was, and it was very affordable to be in Arizona in the winter. Gas is very cheap there too. So it was the whole, it was a piece of like, oh, we're going to really use this and use this as a way to save money and explore Arizona and, not feel like we have to rush out to go somewhere else. So, yeah. That's awesome. So talk a little bit about your business and how it, how it affords you this lifestyle. Yeah. So my business, um, I'm a web presence Sherpa. I do websites and content writing and basically website from start to finish every piece in between. And I had started designing this business for myself about nine years ago and had realized I got myself to this point where, wow, I could be what's called a digital nomad, where I, I could, I, this, is, this is what I wanted my life to look like. I wanted the freedom to travel anywhere, but not have it be a vacation, that I was working wherever I was so that I had that flexibility. Um, that really appealed to me. And then I, I realized as we were in Los Angeles, I went, okay, I'm not exercising this, this business that I've created. Like, we should go take a leap. So that was another piece of the RV travel was okay, let's test this business out on the road, actually, especially with internet challenges sometimes you have while you're mobile too. So that was a true test of my business. And that's been a huge learning curve as well. Um, but yeah, it's to finding, I think that was where I started was lifestyle design, you know, starting for myself. I had been a nine to, nine to five job, you know, it was it just wasn't really satisfying me. I didn't like the live for the weekend mentality. It wasn't working for me. It, it worked for some people really well, but I noticed it wasn't working for me. Um, and so I thought, you know, how do I want my life to look? What do I, you know, I want to be doing work. I want to be helping people. I want to be of service, but I want the flexibility to go wherever I want, whenever I want. And so that's what creating a business like that has afforded me. That's awesome. But I, being completely honest, like when yeah. your, your partner was like, let's hit the road, you uh. were like, well... <laughs> <laughs> because of the internet seriously that was the thing that freaked me out I went how's my internet gonna work you know like because being completely dependent on the internet for my work is great because some people go oh just don't check your email all the time or don't like it's not just that I'm blogging and can blog offline or whatever like I have to be managing websites I have to be able to have access to good quality internet all the time. And so that was like my first freak out was, uh oh, I'm not going to have my broadband, the high speed internet, I cannot do this. And so of course, I'm, I'm tend to be more of a skeptic first sometimes and a freak out. And then I'm, I, I work my way through the fear, right. But you know, so I've explored all these different uh, hotspot options. And, and technology and there's a lot of people out there writing about the logistics of that as well so that's kind of its own little club it's great thinking oh I could work from anywhere all you need is wi-fi but it's like how do you get the wi-fi so that that is a tricky piece you know depending on where you're traveling that's awesome it sounds like an amazing adventure and I just um I'm so glad to to follow you on the blog and um follow you with the um, your web design work. I think, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. This, Thank you. This magical life you've created for yourself, even, you. even though it doesn't probably always feel so magical. <laughs> <laughs> sure even when it's not, it is. That's, a, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a great, <laughs> mm -hmm. perspective. it is, it is because every, everybody we go up to, they, they, we go up and talk to, they're like, wow, there's so much like wonder in people's eyes, this wanderlust. Oh, I wish I could do that. Or, or their illusion of, I thought I had to be retired to do that. Or it's, you know, it's, if, if, if you figure out a way you can do these things. And I think that's what the piece, especially if you're a business owner, like you're driving the boat, where do you want it to go? You know? Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a wonderful inspiration. Bridget, thank you so much for being on the show. It was such yeah. a pleasure. Thank you for having me.